What's up, family? Getting a bit of a late start today because the block party went overtime. Y'all know every day, my team and I, we wake up and we throw a block party. We block all the low-life, dirty scoundrels who come onto the page trying to spread negativity. See, a lot of people would just ignore it, but we block their asses and delete their comments because the idea with this channel is to disseminate information. Once we put the information out there, hey, it's up to you to take it how you want it. See, I'm responsible for what I say, not how you perceive it. So if you get mad, that's okay. You disagree with me, that's okay. But be respectful. Otherwise, I'm going to have your ass working overtime trying to create new accounts, coming back to my page, making comments, and every time I catch it, I'm going to block your ass again. That's just how I go. So let's get into this topic today. This video. Aaron Hernandez, he had his 2013 murder conviction overturned. This is the murder conviction where he was accused of killing Odin Lloyd. Now, the reason why the judge overturned the conviction is because Aaron Hernandez died before he had a chance to appeal his conviction. And that is the law in uh, that state. Now, this is what the judge had to say. Abatement remains the law in this commonwealth, and this court is compelled to follow binding precedent. She said this to a packed courtroom that included Lloyd's mother, Ursula Ward. Now, the district attorney had this to say in rebuttal. Despite the tragic ending to Aaron Hernandez's life, he should not reap the legal benefits of an antiquated rule, Quinn said. State and federal courts from across the country have rejected this antiquated rule. Massachusetts, in my opinion, needs to follow suit. Now, this is what Odin um, Lord's mother had to say about it. In our book, he's guilty and he's going to always be guilty. But I know, I know one day I'm going to see my son and that's the victory that I have and I'm going to take with me. I'm waiting for my master to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, and welcome to the joys of my kingdom. And that's when I'll have and see my baby again. I'm not giving up. When God says the battle is over, the battle is over. So I'm holding on until he tells me to give up. Okay, seems to be a spiritual woman, very religious woman. Let me, let me talk about this, this uh, prosecutor for a moment. The prosecutor said that he wants to get rid of this old and this antiquated rule where, um, where a uh, suspect or a convicted felon can have his uh, murder conviction vacated if he dies before he appeals his conviction, before he gets a chance to uh, exhaust his appeals. Now, so I got a problem with that. Because they ain't got no problem with all these other antiquated ass rules in the judicial system where they hit you with three strikes and you're out, where they hit you with uh, not being able to vote after you do your time where they hit you with not being able to have a gun uh, if you are a convicted felon. They have no trouble with the, the unwritten rule that they have where they uh, levy bias like against certain groups of people, certain classes of people. 
See, they have no problem with that. But the only time the law doesn't work is when it doesn't work for them. Most of the time they get their way. But every now and then, one slithers away and they lose their fucking minds. Now, what I want to know is this. Since Aaron Hernandez died and he got his murder convic conviction overturned, and that means that he's not a murderer, does that mean the person that he murdered isn't deceased? Just, I'm just trying to figure this out, man. I'm trying to figure it out because, you know, I get where they're going with it, but at the same time, I got a problem with that. These laws, this law in particular seems to victimize the victim all over again. Victimize the family all over again. But, you know, it's common practice in, in the state of uh, Massachusetts and in other states to uh, vacate a murder conviction in the event that a, uh, a convicted felon meets his demise before he uh, appeals his case. Now, a lot of people don't like that his conviction was vacated. I understand the sentiments, but I don't recall anyone having a problem when Ken Lay, the CEO of Enron, died under suspicious circumstances. Now, they say it was natural causes, but many people suspect that it was suicide. Nevertheless, his family got all that money that he robbed people of. His family got all the money. So I'm just looking at both sides, man. You know, like I'm trying to look at this thing from an objective standpoint and let y'all draw your own conclusions. But, you know, I am kind of leaning a little bit toward that, you know, this dude, everybody know what this dude did. They know he did it. <laughs> and I really, I want to say he got away with murder, but he really didn't because he's dead. If I get away with a murder, I want to be able to brag about it. Well, nah, I take that back. I don't, not like y'all thinking brag, like go around in the prison brag, like, yeah, I did this. I don't want nothing. I'm talking about at least, I'm talking about bragging, bragging up here. Like, yeah, did that. Did that. That was the problem with OJ. OJ went around bragging. He was real cocky. He got away with a double murder. Y'all know O.J. did that murder. Those murders. O.J. got away with murder. And he flaunted his acquittal. He rubbed it in the face of the prosecutors, the victims, and the public. He rubbed it in the face. And the minute they got a chance to get at his ass, they got at his ass. I mean, who commits a double homicide and writes a book called I Didn't Do It, But If I Had? I think that's the name of the book. Something along those lines. I knew when he wrote that book, especially, I said, oh, they're they going to get his ass. They're going to get him. Now, Aaron Hernandez this is just one like huge tragic case because this dude has so much potential. And there are people out there that are saying that his family don't deserve any money. He got a daughter and a wife and I think a wife fiance, but he got a woman. And they're saying that he don't deserve this money. They're saying that the family don't deserve the money. Personally, I think the family do deserve the money. If the money is his money, it's not about how I feel emotion. I'm talking about what the law said. If the money is his money, we're talking about the money that the New England Patriots owe him, uh, that they took away because he was a convicted felon. Now that that conviction has been erased, they're saying that that $6 million belongs to his family. It belongs to his estate. I agree. 
And I think it's going to be hard for New England Patriots to get away with not paying him. I think it's going to be very hard for them to cheat his family. But then again, I don't know. New England, boy, they, they, they know how to cheat. They know how to get away with cheating. So that'll be interesting to see. But he, it's nothing funny about this. But if it was, it would have to be uh, what we have lawyers, judges, police officials, and politicians that compromise the criminal judicial complex and wonder why so many people hate lawyers, judges, police officials, and politicians. It's no wonder. It's a big sham. It's all game. It's all tricks, bunch of trickery. Too many variables decide whether you're gonna get punished or not. Age, gender, race, class, rich, poor, old, young. Too many variables. Need to get to back to those that some of those systems overseas where you steal anything, get your hand chopped out, bam. <laughs> now we don't need to go that far, but y'all know what I'm saying, man. We need to be consistent with the, the way we uh, levy this punishment. We need to be consistent. That's all I'm saying. Hey, look here, y'all. If you enjoy the videos I'm bringing to you and you find value in them, join the movement. Go to patreon.com and pledge. Keep the platform going. Patreon.com slash Willie D Live. The link is in the description. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Damn. Order, Texas.